Hey everybody, I hope you all having a great day. As you can see by the title of this video, it's going to be about some tips like beauty and fashion stuff and then just general tips that I think would be helpful if you're going to be going to events like doing reporting, interviewing, that sort of thing, or at red carpet events. I'm getting more used to doing these things, but I know when I first started doing them, like I googled around everywhere. I was searching for like tips, what to say, what to wear, what to ask, what to bring, what not to bring. And I didn't really find a whole lot of resources out there. And so this was just, you know, completely up to me. I'm contracted to work with different people, different places, but ultimately it's up to me to figure these things out. So I wish I would have had a video like this that was there to sort of guide me. So I hope if you all are interested in the same field, fashion journalism, writing, blogging, doing interviews, red carpet reporting, that this will be helpful to you uh, when you start going to your events. You never know where life will take you. I definitely never expected to be in this field of work even. You know, a couple of years ago before I started this channel, I was just wanted to hide, just wanted to hide from the world, nobody to notice me in my fashion or to see me or, you know, I never imagined interviewing celebrities and designers and people in the fashion world. So this is completely new to me. So some of you, you never know, you might find yourself in the same situation. And I've, I've gotten kind of used to it in the past two years a little bit more, but it's still, I mean, it's a work in progress. You're always learning with each event you attend, with each thing you do, so you never know what to expect, but I think these few things that I brought in here and a couple of tips I want to share with you should be pretty helpful, I hope. So first things first, if you get invited to an event, do your research. Know who's going to be there, what they do, who's putting on the event, what the event is for or benefiting, all that sort of stuff. If it's going to be designers there, what kind of designs do they do, know a little bit about them. Basically, you want to study from the moment you get the invite up until the event itself. Study like it's finals exams week, okay? You really want to know your stuff before you go because you may not have time to look down at a paper and try to remember. Some events are more well organized than other events. Like, you know, I was at a really well organized event last weekend where it had a red carpet and there were... Uh, we were giving like photos, like headshots of all the people, a little guide with that, and then also, you know, um, a paper that let us know who every single person was. And then they had handlers who walked through with the stars, and they even had on their papers who the star was and what they do. Not all things are that well organized, though. You may, it may be complete chaos, there may not be any sort of order to anything. So if you do get one of those well organized events, then feel blessed, feel thankful because they're not all that way. But anyway, the one I was at last week was incredibly, incredibly well organized. But anyway, you do want to know your stuff, so do some studying. You know, is that person an author, a model, a writer, an actor? What do they do? What are they known for? What TV show are they on? And then you can sort of develop a few questions to go along with that person that will be of interest to them and what they're doing and then of interest to you and your audience. Like last weekend I interviewed Kate Flannery from The Office. So she's an actress on television and to incorporate Kentucky Derby in with what she does, I asked her what she thought her character Meredith would wear to the Kentucky Derby and she had us rolling. Like she was so funny with her answer, very creative, but she was able to tap into this character and really share with us and you know, sort of fuse the two together so that worked out perfectly. So anytime you can do something like that, I think it's awesome. Also come up with questions for individual people that you know you want to interview so that you can be sure to ask those. And you may have just a short amount of time or you may have a lot of time, so just be prepared either way. As far as equipment goes, I would recommend bringing two cameras and a voice recorder if you're going to be on your own. That way, you know, you can just hold your voice recorder up and those people can hear what you're saying and then later you can just play it back because you may not have time, you know, to write down everything and remember it, what everybody's saying, like that, especially with so many people coming at once. So, yeah, if you can do that, then that's really helpful. Have your voice recorder. Two cameras because you never know what will happen. Last week I was at, at Tinsley Mortimer party for her new book. I don't know what happened to it, but it crapped out on me, so I lost all my pictures from that event, and that was just yeah, awful, but I always try to bring two cameras with me. I had a professional photographer with me last week at the red carpet event, just because there are so many people, and some of them are coming through at the same time. You don't have a lot of time, so it's really helpful if you're able to interview the person, and then there's a photographer to take the photos as celebrities are walking in or while you're interviewing. Very, very helpful. 
Uh, if you don't have professional, like the big professional cameras, it's okay. I've seen a lot of people lately taking pictures on their iPhones. I mean, sometimes like I just bring digital cameras with me. They're easy, they fit in my purse, and I mean, they do a good enough job. So I just bring two digital cameras, so I've got my backup. But I've seen a lot of people with iPhones lately at events, so... You know, it's okay if you don't, if you're just starting out, like I don't have a big professional camera, but I still take pictures, right? So, definitely recommend that. As far as what you're wearing to the event, be comfortable. You could be there for hours upon hours upon hours, or if you have multiple events in one day, you know, you've got to be comfortable, whether you're at a red carpet event, a casual event, fashion event, whatever it is. Wear something that, you know, fits your style, fits with the event. Don't be overdressed or underdressed, kind of in between. A little black dress should always work for evening events. And I always wear flats because you might get at an event at, you know, two or three hours before people even get there. And there may not be anywhere to set, but you've, you've got to be there to check in. So you're just standing around, you know, and you've got to wait. So flats are a mess for your feet. If you are coming from another event or you want to wear heels to walk in, then you can always bring like this. This is a spare pair and this is it's got the roll up ballet flats in it because your feet after a while after just standing still in the same spot because there's not a lot of room to move around you might be like this close to someone beside you. I mean it's literally no room. You might be like shoulder to shoulder with them. So flats are really helpful because you are going to be standing and uh, your feet will thank you later. Don't worry about, oh, I'm wearing heels. You're not, you know, you're not the person on the red carpet, so let them do their thing. Let them shine. It's their special night, and, you know, we'll just do our work in comfort. As far as jewelry goes, I like to keep it simple. If I have a voice recorder, I don't want, like, bangly, jingly bracelets, you know, like, clanking around. That could interfere with what the person's saying, so when you play it back to get a quote later on, you know, it you may or may not have it so I usually just kind of stay away from anything that jingles or you know multiple bangles or something that could cause a lot of noise I like to wear like a shorter necklace so it's again the same thing not getting tangled around caught up jingling anything like that so I just sort of keep it simple last week I just wore my Henry Bindle jumbo pearl necklace I'll show you I'll show you what it looks like so this is my Henry Bindle jumbo pearl necklace I wore last week just because I was at a black tie event. This is a shorter necklace but it's so cute. I just had to wear it. It's a nicer necklace and I loved it. It went well with my dress. My dress was black and tan but it was very comfortable, stretchy fabric. You know me. I have to be comfortable. So I wore that. That's what I would suggest. If you're more comfortable in pants, wear pants. You don't have to wear a dress. Wear what you're going to feel comfortable and confident in. As far as nails, I like to keep my nails sort of light. Lately I've been wearing just this light pink. This is from Sephora by OPI. And the shade is called Dear Diary. It's just a very light pink color. I even had a lighter color than this when I was at a red carpet event last week. I had a manicure done professionally. I had my hair, makeup, and manicure done professionally before I went. And they even did a lighter, more natural pink. But I just, I like it because if my fingernails if something happens and the polish chips, you don't have time to reapply it. You know, there's no time on the red carpet for any of that kind of stuff. So, a lighter color, it's not as noticeable. So, I like that. It just saves me a little embarrassment or feeling self-conscious about, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Also, it might be very, very hot wherever you are. I mean, you, like I said, are just jumbled in with a bunch of other reporters. So, you don't want to be hot and sweaty. Clinical Secret is a must, and it keeps dry, it doesn't like stain your clothes. I put this on like usually when I get out of the shower. If you can get like a little travel size, that's cool too because it fits easily in your purse. But I put it on after, after my shower, and it just sort of div dissolves into your skin, which is really, really nice. And it doesn't leave like a white residue, or at least for me it doesn't. And so, you know, it's just clear, you're smooth, and then you can put your clothes on, you're dry all day, you don't have to worry about embarrassing stains or anything like that and so love it because you don't want white marks on your dress right or sweat stains even worse so definitely the clinical secret this one is a lavender one which I love the smell of it's called ooh la la lavender and oh my goodness I love this stuff it's a red carpet must have 
Sometimes people want to shake your hand, some don't, but some do, so you want soft hands. This is my L'Occitane hand cream, and it keeps your hands just soft and smooth. You can keep it in your purse just in case, because you might forget before you go, or you might just need to refresh. Also, keep the fresh breath. You don't know what's going to happen. You might have had lunch before you had to go, or had to eat before you go. Whatever the case, these are just the Listerine breath strips. Again, easy to fit in your bag to take with you. You can just pop one in in between if you're feeling unsure and they'll freshen your breath. Also, you don't want cracked dry lips on there. You want to, because people are going to be looking at what you're saying if you're interviewing them. They're paying attention. They're wanting to focus on the questions you're asking. So if your lips are dry and cracked and all that, you know, they're going to notice. So this is just the MAC lip conditioner, the Ricky Martin one. And it keeps my lips hydrated, so I just keep it in my bag again because you never know if you're gonna, if you're gonna need it, what's gonna happen. You're gonna be doing a lot of talking, so your mouth might get dry more quickly than usual. So it's just it's nice to have. Also, I've been taking this that you guys saw my little dress bar and emergency kit because, like I said, it's better to be prepared. You never know what's gonna happen, and if something were to <laughs> break off become unbuttoned you need to thread your needle and sew up a hole you never know but I've got all my stuff I haven't had to use any of it yet thank goodness but in case I do I've got you know my lint tape a fingernail file buttons um, safety pin earring backs ponytail holder bobby pin needle and thread I mean all the stuff that you might need which you can make your own kit at home as well if you don't have a little emergency kit. So, but, you know, you never know. I just, I think it's best to be prepared. I've learned that along the way. To expect anything. And then I always just have my little mirror and brush combo. Just in case, it's just easy. It fits in, you know, you've got the mirror and then the brush and you're good to go. You can do any touch-ups. I do bring a little bit of makeup, like powder is important, because if it's hot and you start to shine in, you might want your powder. I don't bring a full thing of makeup with me, I just kind of bring like powder, lip colors. I always have an assortment of lip colors with me anyway, but those are kind of the most important things to me. If you're, you know, different or you prefer something else, then put your favorite things in there just in case. But anyway, those are a few tips, tricks, things I've learned along the way, things I think would be helpful to someone else if they're going to be at an event. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any other questions, you can message me on here and uh, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye everybody.